Good evening, wrestlers fans. It's Friday night, and we just might have a heck of a hockey game lined up here for you. It's the Wainwright Wrestlers season opener against the Elk Point Elks. Some Sask Alta Senior Hockey League action to start the season here in Wainwright, Alberta. We're bringing you all the action live from Vision Credit Union Arena at the Peace Memorial Multiplex as these two teams face off to kick off the wrestler season. The Elks already have one game under their belt. We're happy to have you back after a long summer and fall without any wrestlers hockey. We're excited to be back in the arena and bring you all the action live here from Wainwright. I'm Zach McLaughlin. I will be bringing you the play-by-play -play all throughout the evening. Well, we're just about set to get started here. But before we do, we'll hand it over to our PA announcer and our singer for this evening's game as we listed the singing of O Canada before we officially drop the puck on the wrestlers' 2023-24 regular season. Thank you. Tonight, the wrestlers would like to introduce their honorary captain, Foster Dennis. Foster is seven years old and plays for the North Shore U9 hockey team. The Toronto Maple Leafs is his favorite hockey team, and Sidney Crosby is his favorite player. Foster's ideal pregame meal is bacon and eggs, and in his free time, Foster gets to play road hockey and snowmobile. Welcome, honorary captain. Foster Dennis! It's at this time, I should want to rise the table to remove cover for the singing of O Canada by Women's School, Sheila Gosling.
And we are ready to go for some wrestlers hockey action. Special thanks to tonight's honorary captain, Foster Dennis, and our local singer of O Canada, Jayla Godson, who does a wonderful job as always. Much appreciate her getting our night started off right here. And as Foster heads back to the locker room, the wrestlers are about to line up at center ice and get things started here. Starting five for your Wainwright wrestlers is going to be Derek Fister. Along with Wyatt Watson and Cale Perkins up front, it's Spencer Goslin and the newlywed Josh Berg on the back end. Congratulations to him and his bride as they tied the knot just a couple weekends ago. The wrestlers won the opening draw, try to work the puck in deep, but the Elks put a stop to that and Beattie picks it up, placed it into the near corner, deep in wrestlers' territory. Berg fans on the puck behind the net. The Elks with a chance out of front and a bouncing puck almost went over Thomas Eisman and into the goal, but luckily it bounced over the net and out of harm's way. But now a chance for Gagne in front, but a good shot block there by Goslin. And Berg picks it up. He looks for an outlet pass and he slings it up in the air just in the neutral zone to give the wrestlers a little time and space and get some fresh legs out there. But now Roy brings it in across the blue line. His shot ends up right in the chest of Eisman and he holds on for the faceoff. You're starting goaltenders tonight for your Wainwright wrestlers. It's Thomas Eisman. The wrestlers, one of the few teams to have the blessing of having a pair of starting goaltenders, a 1A and a 1B, if you will. Tommy Eisman's the one to draw the start tonight. Nolan Goodwin backing him up on the bench this evening. And on the other side, it's Grady Fraser, the Elks' longtime goaltender, who gave the wrestlers fits in the postseason last year in the opening round. He'll look to keep that momentum up against the wrestlers in their home barn tonight as the wrestlers take an icing call and the puck's gonna come all the way back down to the other end. Brant Soretsky and Ori Wood in for the draw and Wood wins it for the Elks. They sling it in behind the net. Fletcher's there to chase it down. He can't get there in time as that puck rolled up on its end and ended up in the corner. And now the Elks have a chance but the wrestlers pick the pocket. It's Kelvin Hamilton with the puck, but his pass is deflected back into the wrestler's corner. And they're not able to get it out. They'll have another chance here. Soretsky picks it up. He chips it forward one-handed, finds Mike Shirley. Shirley got it lost in his skates, but he's able to chip it down the ice, and he'll go for a line change. Now the wrestlers force a turnover just inside the blue line, and it's Hamilton in the corner. He reverses course, but there's nobody there to pick it up in an orange jersey, and the Elks able to flip it right out towards the red line. Berg sends it in deep once again, and Shirley there on the forecheck, but not able to get there in time. But Woodward forces a turnover at the blue line and almost got a little tic-tac-toe chance at the side of the goal there, not able to get much on it. And now the wrestlers regroup at center ice. Stretch pass for Cole Bing Bendixson. Bendixson out of his reach and ends up on net and Eisman covers that one up for a faceoff. Plenty of history between these two teams in the last 12 months or so. This past season, the wrestlers and Elks played seven times in uh, the 2022-23 hockey season as they are doing. So right now, the wrestlers opened up their season at home against the Elks last year. Ended up beating them 14-5 in a one-sided affair. They played again in January for the second regular season matchup, which is traditionally a home-and-home -home between Saskalta teams. So in January, they played in Elk Point, and the wrestlers once again picked up the win in regular season play. And then the two teams, the wrestlers as the two seed and the Elks as the seventh seed in the league table. As we take a break here, I'll get back to that. It looks like Brad Bailey's down on the ice. He looks like he's in a lot of pain. Not sure what happened. We'll see if we can see it here on, 
on my own little replay. Chainers are coming out to help him, and he got absolutely blown up from behind. No penalty call on the play as he was sent nose first into the boards, and he is in a lot of pain. You don't see Bailey stay down on the ice too long. He's a shot-blocking machine and a workhorse out there. So you know he's more than uncomfortable if he's staying on the ice this long. And he's slowly getting up to his feet now. And now he's going to make his way to the bench for some further attention by the trainers as the crowd gives him a hand and helps him off. And we're back to some hockey action. We'll give you an update on Bailey as soon as we get one. Russell's played in deep. No icing call is Wyatt got a piece of that. Sorry, Wyatt Watson. Watson got a piece of that. And now the Elks turn it up ice. Norman tried to take a whack at it, but couldn't get it out of the zone. And now the Elks from the point. And that seeing eye puck through a bunch of bodies ends up right in the chest of Eisman. He holds on for the draw. As I was saying before, these two teams, to recap, played in the season over, played again in January. The Rustlers won both those matchups in the regular season, ended up facing each other as the 2 7 matchup in the opening round of the playoffs. The Elks won the first game on home ice. The Rustlers returned home in game two and won that one on their home ice. And then the Elks won back to back games to give them the big upset victory in the first round of the playoffs against the wrestlers. They went on to get swept by the Lashburn Flyers in the following round, and the Flyers went on to win the league title. But then those two teams also participated in the Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships, which were hosted right here in Wainwright. Wrestlers, of course... Contest in that tournament as the host. And the Elks made it to Provincials on the fact that they were the last Alberta team standing in the Saskalta postseason. So they were representing the Saskalta, although they did not win the league championship. And those two teams played in the second game. They played in the second game of the tournament in the spring, and the wrestlers won that one. And, of course, as you know, the wrestlers went on to win the provincial championship here on home ice. The Elks ended up losing in the bronze medal game of that tournament to the Spirit River Rangers. But we're just over four minutes into the first period here, a scoreless hockey game as the wrestlers are going to get some fresh legs out here for an offensive zone faceoff. Seretsky in for the draw. He wins it back. Shirley's there to pick it up and ship it back to Berg at the point. Berg's shot was deflected, but Hamilton picks it up. Plays it over to Seretsky. With, tries a saucer pass right into the blue paint. Russell's got a couple whacks at it, but we not able to poke one in. And now Berg's shot from the point. Catches a shin pad and ricochets all the way down the ice. Goslin's going to be there to pick it up. Now the wrestlers get out of the zone. Soretsky chips it forward, and now they got a two-on-one. He comes in, makes the pass, a little backhand move from Kelvin Hamilton. He's not able to beat the outstretched left pad of Grady Fraser as the wrestlers denied their first golden scoring opportunity of the regular season. They keep it in the zone here. But only for a moment as Beatty picks it up. And we get a whistle for interference coming up. It's going to be an Elk Point penalty. And the Rustlers are going to head to the power play for the first time tonight, exactly five minutes into this first period, looking to break the ice and get the first goal of the game.
This power play unit, it's going to be White Watson, Derek Fister, Kale Perkins, Connor James, and Spencer Goslin. James picks it up just inside the wrestler's blue line. His pass got picked off, though, and the Elks able to clear it all the way down the ice. Eisman comes out, plays the puck along the boards, and now Fister carrying it through the middle of the ice. He slides it over to Perkins. Perkins comes in and fires a good wrister with a little head fake. Almost caught Fraser looking the other way, and now a chance from the side of the goal. Perkins again, but Fraser with the save, and the Elks are able to clear the zone. Watson picks it up from Goslin behind the wrestler's net. He skates it up the left wing all on his own. He crosses the blue line. He's coming in on Fraser, tries a short side. But the save was made. He was looking for a call, but no official hands in the air. And now he's wide open in front, but Perkins couldn't get the pass through. Berg wasn't able to keep the clearing attempt inside the zone, and now the Elks have a chance coming the other way. They cross the blue line. A little drop pass there. They come in and fire a hard shot, but Eisman with a good blocker save. And now the wrestlers struggling to regain possession of the pockets. Roy had it pinned against the boards there and killing some time. Off this penalty is now the wrestlers carried into the zone. Hamilton's not able to handle that hard pass, and puck comes outside the blue line. Fletcher gets almost dumped into the Elks bench. But he was able to kick it forward anyway, and now James picks up the puck. He cuts around the outside, now around the back of the net. He's got a loose stick to contend with. He gets free of that, and now a loose puck at the blue line. He gets it back, tries to chip it down low. But the Elks are going to take another penalty here. It's going to be kneeing, as there's a little bit of a knee on knee there. It's going to be Bailey Lonsberry heading to the box, the assistant captain for the Elks, and Looked like him and Mike Shirley were exchanging a few words, as Mike Shirley has been known to do. So as the one penalty expires, the Elks take another, and now the wrestlers back on the full two-minute power play once again. Wrestlers win the faceoff to start this power play. Goslin trying to go across the blue line with pass to Connor James, but he got deflected into the neutral zone, and the wrestlers have to try and set up once again. Hamilton kicks it up to himself and now leaves it there at the point for Goslin. Over to James on the left side. James tries to go the other way, and he had Hamilton just on top of the blue paint, but his one timer went wide of the goal. The Elks now ring it around the boards. It's going to clear the zone, and Brant Soretsky is going to chase it back in the wrestler's territory and quickly plays it forward. But Hamilton was looking for Shirley. Didn't see Roy right in the passing lane. And the Elks able to kill even more time off this power play. We've got a whistle here. For a high stick, it's going to be wrestler's captain Spencer Goslin heading into the box. A two-minute high-sticking penalty. And I was mistaken that kneeing penalty, of course, was a four-minute infraction, not a two-minute penalty. So the wrestlers will play some four-on-four -four hockey for the next two minutes, and they will have just over a minute of power play time remaining after that. Now Fisher down the left wing, slams on the brakes, finds Watson, who fires a shot, but just wide of the net. That ricochets off the corner boards and out into the neutral zone. Josh Berg there to pick it up. He gets it to Watson once again. He crosses the blue line, keeps it himself, tries to dance through a few defenders. But it gets knocked off a stick, and the Elks able to clear the zone. Gagne comes the other way. His cross crease, cross ice pass to Kiener doesn't connect. And now the wrestlers with a chance to come the other way. A lot of ice here on four on four. 
Connor James turns up the heat. It's turbo time as he steps in, goes backhand. And no goal. A bit of a delayed signal from the referee. What a move by Connor James as he danced around the defender. And quite a little dipsy dangle to step around the goaltender, but a great job there by Fraser to kick the pad out, make the save, and hold on for the faceoff. Rustlers win the draw, but Sretsky got upended. He's able to sling the puck in deep and allows Perkins to go on the forecheck. Now Sretsky on the forecheck as the Elks have it behind their own goal. Beattie steps out from behind his own net, looks for the stretch pass, but out of the reach of Ori Wood and ends up bouncing off the boards and right into the Rustler's blue paint. So Eisman's going to hold on for a faceoff. 50 seconds left in the Goslin High sticking penalty, and then the Rustlers will be back on the power play. Sureski wins the draw once again. And it's Bailey back out there. He's looking healthy, and look at him go, turning on the Jets on the forecheck. That is one tough cookie to get back out there after taking a hit like that and getting dumped into the boards head first. But he's back out there on the penalty kill where he thrives most nights. Now the Elks enter the zone. Not able to do much with it as Woodward got a stick on it, cleared it into the neutral zone. Now Brandon Muse, hard on the forecheck in the corner, looking for a teammate. He finds Connor James, and his shot catches the shaft of an elk stick, and he gets tackled in the corner. No penalty call there as Goslin comes out of the box, and the wrestler's on the power play for the next minute, five seconds. Fister down the left wing, slams on the brakes and spins around. He finds Goslin at the point. Goslin with a long shot, and he scores! The wrestlers are on the board. The captain, Spencer Goslin, with the first goal of the season. Great job by Derek Fister to work the puck deep in the zone, give the wrestlers some time to set up on the power play. And Cale Perkins, the big man, with a great screen in front, giving Spencer Gosson all the time and space in the world to just send a nice wrist shot. Top glove side. And nothing but net as the wrestlers take a one nothing lead on the power play here. Just over halfway through this opening period of the season. Now the wrestlers with a chance again. It's Norman down the left wing. He lets go of a hard little snapshot that ends up right in the chest of the goaltender, and he holds on for a faceoff. Nine thirty-three left in this opening frame as Trevor Clawson comes in to take the draw. He kicks it back and ends up coming outside the blue line, and the wrestlers just have to send it in deep and go hard on the forecheck. The Elks work it in behind the wrestler goal. Eisman comes out, big backhand play to swing it around the boards. Now the wrestlers play it forward, and a big hit there as Tyler Ray got dumped at the Elks' blue line. He got hit real hard. Looks like it might have been a little bit high. Not sure if there's a penalty call on that. The, the Elks were already taking a penalty. As there was a delayed penalty called, and Razor is down on the ice, and he just got hit real hard. I think that was a clean hit. But it definitely rung his bell. And he's down on the ice as the trainers are getting a good workout tonight. Definitely earning their money as they're back out on the ice. Trevor Clausen's there to make sure Razor's okay.
definitely a scary collision. And Ray still down in the ice. He's, he is talking and he's moving. And now the crowd is appreciating an extra Elks player heading to the box because it looks like defenseman and assistant captain Brian Beatty, sorry, Brighton Beatty, he's heading to the locker room and that's going to do it for his night. Razor still hasn't moved much. He's starting to lift his head now. He's moving his legs a little bit. And the wrestlers are going to have a long extended power play opportunity here. A seven minute penalty just went up on the board. Looks like Beatty's going to take a penalty for. A hit to the head. Razor a little weak in the knees right now as Goslin and Clausen are going to help him off the ice. We'll check on him in the intermission and let you know how he's doing, but he looks a little woozy at the moment. One of the oldest players on the wrestler's roster, one of the most dedicated players in the wrestler's roster. Going to head to the locker room and get checked out. Looks like there might be a hospital visit involved, but we will find out about that. We will let you know. And now we're back to hockey action as the wrestlers, as I mentioned, with a long power play opportunity here. Seven minutes on the board, and Connor James puts a shot towards the goal, but it caught his teammate in the shin pad. Didn't make it to the net. It's going to be two for roughing, which was the delayed penalty, and then another five for contact to the head and a game misconduct for Beatty. And the Elks are going to be down a defenseman for the remainder of the night. The wrestlers, though, will be down a forward for the remainder of the night. No chance Razor steps back on the ice in this one. But the wrestlers now in the near corner in Elks territory. It's Fister sending it up to Watson. Now across to James, back to Watson. He steps in down the left side, steps around the defender, and a chance in front for Fister, but he redirects that puck wide of the goal. Now he steps out, and James comes in and fires a rocket of a shot from in tight. But Fraser, in good position, makes the save. And now the Elks come the other way. It's Gagne trying to work around Berg, and things are going to get feisty here tonight. I can tell you that right now. After a couple of not-so-clean collisions from the Elks on a couple of veteran and well-respected wrestlers players in this first period, Tensions are going to be high throughout the remainder of the night. I can promise you that. But now Soretsky from behind the goal. A minute and a half gone in this seven-minute power play. The Elks have a chance to clear it, but they don't get it across the blue line. Fletcher fires a shot, but it's blocked. Now Soretsky in the far corner picks it up, slams in the brakes behind the net, and works it back to Hamilton. Hamilton cross ice to Fletcher. His shot was blocked. Good positioning there by Lonsberry to keep that puck from reaching the goal. Now Soretsky down low with a nice little backhand pass to the side of the net, but Hamilton's shot was stopped by Fraser. And exactly two minutes into this long power play, we get a whistle and a face-off in the offensive zone for the wrestlers. Now from the point, it's Soretsky. Works it to James and now down low to Hamilton. He quickly goes to the slot to Soretsky. 
He's got it just inside the blue line. His shot is deflected off the shaft of a stick and comes down right in front of the net. Hamilton took a whack at it, and Frazier took exception to that. But nothing much comes to that. We get another faceoff here in the out zone. Now James slides it over to Hamilton. He works to cross the blue line to James once again. He's got Gosselin on the left. Gosselin going cross pass to Hamilton in the slot, but a couple of Elks players were right in the passing lane there, and they couldn't get it through. Now Shirley has it along the half wall, sends it to James. James, with plenty of patience, lets the four-checker get out of his own way. And now Soretsky with a battle in the corner. He works it forward to Shirley. Now to the point to Goslin. This Elks penalty kill is doing a great job keeping the wrestlers to the outside. The wrestlers just moving it around patiently looking for a lane. Watson now slides it over to James on the left side of the blue line. Now back to Watson. Back to James once again. He's on the back pedal looking for a lane to shoot. Ends up sliding it down to Watson, but he can't pull the trigger on a shot. The Elks ring it around the boards, but not out of the zone as it's Goslin from the point once again. He gets it to Shirley. Shirley can't handle that bobbling pass, and Watson takes a whack at the loose puck, but Fraser's able to swallow that one up and hold on for a faceoff. We got three and a half minutes to go in the power play for the wrestlers. Just over five and a half minutes to go in this first period. Now Fletcher works it down to Watson. Fletcher couldn't take the pass in return. And now Ori Wood with the loose puck flies down the left side. Puts a shot up high on Eisman. That might have caught him awkwardly as he's a little slow to get up. Keep an eye on him as he should have some time to recoup as the wrestlers continue to work in the power play. Hard shot by Fletcher, but it caught Watson in front as he was trying to set the screen. Puck doesn't make it to the net. And now Fletcher from the point once again. He comes across to Fister and he scores. Fister with the one-timer on the left face-off dot. He had a bit of a rolling puck, but he made no mistake and put it over top of this, the sprawling Grady Fraser to make this a 2-0 hockey game with 4.51 remaining in the first period. Now the wrestler is still working on the power play as the two-minute minor was the first penalty to come off the board. So they're working on a five-minute major right now. They're going to stay out there for the full five minutes. And they score again. It's the wrestlers taking a 3 nothing lead as they're finally starting to hit on all cylinders. The power play working as Brandon Muse scores his first goal as a Wainwright wrestler. He does it on the power play with 439 left in the first period. Giving the wrestlers a 3-0 advantage. Muse and company will stay out on the ice now. But Muse, after winning the faceoff, will head to the box and see if he broke his stick on the faceoff. Now Goslin with a nice move to step around Roy. Comes in, fires a shot. And the save was made by Fraser and deflected up over the net. The wrestlers pick it up behind the elk point net. Shirley standing in front waiting for it, but it goes back to Connor James at the point. Now Brett Leggett in the corner. He's got James open at the point. And he leaves it there for him. James works towards the middle of the ice, looking for a shooting lane. Can't find one. Eventually does. 
and he sends a seeing eye wrist shot all the way through a crowd and it rings off the outside of the post. Rustlers with possession of the puck once again. They got a minute and a half left on this major penalty. That Goslin shot missed the net. And the Elks able to pick up the loose puck and sling it down the ice. Eisman comes way out of his crease to play it. Finds Connor James there right in front of the penalty boxes. He takes his time trying to step around Gagne, but isn't able to do so cleanly. The Elks were able to get a hold of that puck for a brief moment, and now a chance for Hamilton, and what a goal! Kelvin Hamilton with the veteran presence and patience steps in and rips one off the bar. The puck comes straight back down onto his stick, and he puts it top shelf for his first goal of the campaign, making it 4 nothing for the wrestlers. There's 3-10 left in this opening period. Now another face-off here in Elks territory. Three minutes to go in this opening frame, which has been a physical one. It's taken its toll on the wrestlers so far early on in this season. But they hold on to a 4-0 lead here in the opening frame. Fister plays it down low behind the Elks net. And there's Austin Witzel who got buried behind the net. Fister's there to pick it up, though. Plays it up to the point. Berg sends it down low once again. And Clausen chases it down in the far corner. He reverses field for Witzel. Fister picks it up there, tries to center and pass from behind the net, but it gets cleared out of harm's way. We're now back to five-on-five five hockey as the wrestlers cashed in three times on that extended man advantage, taking a commanding 4 nothing lead. And now a battle in the corners. The wrestlers are not allowing the Elks a chance to clear the zone, but eventually the puck comes loose, centering pass. Ends up on an elk stick, but stolen away quickly by Goslin. And now we got a whole bunch of tired bodies out there. That puck gets cleared all the way down the ice. It's not going to be deep enough for icing, but it will be deep enough to get a line change for a number of players on both sides of the puck. Now Connor James with it. He plays it off the glass. No rustler there to pick it up. And the Elks come the other way. Woodward with a great job to pick the pocket of the puck carrier. Try and say that 10 times fast. And now Connor James right up the middle of the ice with all kinds of speed. Frazier made the save. The rebound was kicked right onto Woodward's stick, but he wasn't able to get enough on that shot to get a real scoring chance. And now a stick explodes on the defenseman. I don't have that number on my roster, but... The Elks defenseman had a stick absolutely shatter as he was trying to clear the puck. The wrestlers had a chance, but nothing came of it. And now the Elks with a chance the other way, but Perkins does a great job to put a stop to that just inside the blue line. Now Watson comes in and fires and scores! Watson with his first regular season goal. It's a Wainwright wrestler making it 5 nothing with 40 seconds to go in the period. The wrestlers with contributions all up and down the lineup. 5 nothing early on in this one with five different goal scorers. And Wainwright definitely getting the season started right as they have full control of this game early on on a Friday night in Wainwright. The Elks win the draw. Now from inside their own blue line, it's Charlie Robo looking for an outlet. He can't find one, so he just sends a stretch pass to to a crowd. No icing call, and now a battle along the half wall in the wrestler's territory on the near side. and A little bit of rough stuff between uh, Fister and Rogel there, but 
Nothing too serious comes to that as time ticks down on this opening period. Watson might have an opportunity here if he hustles, but he's just going to eat it as we hit the buzzer, and that's going to do it. For the first 20 minutes of the Wainwright Rustlers regular season, it's 5 nothing. after 20 minutes of play. The shot's 21-7 to in favor of the Wainwright Rustlers as they're going to head to the box. I'm going to grab myself a nice, cold, refreshing beverage, and we'll be right back with you in about 20 minutes for the start of the second period.
Welcome back, folks, for the start of the second period. It's a 5-0 lead for the hometown wrestlers through 20 minutes of play. And the Elks win the opening faceoff here. They put a long shot in on goal, and it's directed into the corner by Asman. Bailey's there battling for it. He's got Soretsky with him. Bailey comes away with it, chips it off the boards and into the neutral zone. Now the Elks from their own end. They chip it across the ice in the neutral zone. Trying to chase it down, but Hamilton gets to it first and gets it deep into the Elks territory. And now he throws a good hit in the corner. Keeping the physicality going here early in the second period. Bailey keeps it just inside the zone. Gets it down deep and goes for a line change. Now the Elks trying to get out of their own end. They play it all the way down the ice, and that's going to be an icing call as the Elks players are going to have to stay on the ice as no line change is allowed after an icing call as of last season in the Saskalta. Now Watson comes in for the draw. To Grady Fraser's glove hand side, and Roy gets kicked out of the circle. So Kenner comes in, but Watson wins the faceoff for the wrestlers. They work it in deep. Fister is not able to pick it up behind the net. It comes all the way around to James along the boards, and his shot caught out of the air by Fraser and held on to for a faceoff. If you missed it before puck dropped today, we had a special moment of silence to honor longtime Saskalta Senior Hockey League president Rod Booten, who passed away very suddenly earlier this month. Saskalta hockey fans are mourning the loss of the longtime president who did so much for this league and was a big part of the success that this league has seen for the last many years. He will surely be missed. And a classy move by teams all around the league to have a moment of silence before their season openers. Now we got a quick whistle, not sure what for, as Fister had a chance at the side of the goal and actually put it in the net, but no goal. It was waved off. Zaretsky comes in for the draw now. Across from him is Ben Dixon, and Ben Dixon wins the draw. The Elks come away with it. It's Kenner with plenty of speed down the right wing. His backhand was knocked down by Eisman. The rebound ends up on a on Kenner's stick, and the Elks now keep it in the zone. Another chance for that shot was blocked. The shot from the point goes well wide of the net. And now the wrestlers with a chance to clear it. They can't get it. Across the blue line, though, and it's Lonsberry looking for the centering pass. It was knocked down, and Soretsky picks up the loose puck. He slams on the brakes right before the red line and sends it back into the wrestler's territory to slow things down. Goslin with a nice stretch pass to Clausen. Clausen looking for Soretsky, but that pass got knocked down, and now Roy picks it up on the right wing. He slams on the brakes, slows things down, puts a shot right on goal, and Eisman with a good save. And wrestlers come away with the rebound. It's Clausen who flips it down to the Elk Point blue line. The Elks now exit the zone. Gagne with a stretch pass all the way over to Roy. Roy with the backhander, and he scores. Eisman had a couple bodies in front of him, and that backhander, as Roy was skating to his left and flipped a little backhander, Back to the right and beat Eisman on the glove side as he was screened right in front of the net. And the Elks get on the board. It's now a 5-1 to one hockey game as the visitors have a little life on their bench. And now the wrestlers... With a turnover just inside the Elk Point blue line, and 
Good shot there by Brandon Muse, but an even better save by Fraser as the Elks now come the other way. Roy controls the puck. Right in front of the Zamboni doors and a chance right in front. A couple whacks at it. Well, Mason Stabler can't beat Eisenman as he stood tall in the blue paint. And then Leggett just barely avoiding a huge hit right in front of the wrestler bench. And the wrestler's with the puck in deep. It's surely behind the net. He gets knocked off his stick, but he stays with it. He gets pinned against the boards, though, and the wrestler's... Able to keep it inside the blue line, and a rolling puck ended up on Shirley's stick. He took a whack at it, but a good save made. And now loose puck comes all the way into the neutral zone. A chance here as the Elks come the other way, and Ori Wood can't get a shot off on the one-timer. Chance point blank, and Tommy Eisman with a fantastic save coming outside of the blue paint to cut down the angle, and he swallows up that one. Not giving the Elks a chance to gain any momentum here. And just shy of four minutes into the second period, we're going to get a face-off to Eisenman's left-hand side. Of course, there are many, many returning players for the wrestlers, a lot of mainstays that have been around for a long time. But there's a few faces missing this year that... Longtime wrestlers fans will certainly miss. Most notably, probably the greatest wrestler career of all time in Chad Marchand. He decided to hang them up this year as he's moved out of the community and played numerous, numerous years in the orange and black. Undoubtedly the highest point total of any wrestler career of all time. He was certainly the heart and soul of this team and he will be missed as he decided to announce his retirement after the provincial championship victory last season. Another face that didn't have as many years under his belt with the wrestlers but was definitely a force to be reckoned with over the last few seasons is Brian Ouellette as his Canadian Armed Forces career has taken him to Australia. So he has stepped away from the team and left a, a hole on the blue line that will surely be filled by some of the young newcomers to this team who are already making an impact here in the first oh, 25 minutes of this season. But Ouellette, another one of the wrestlers, provincial champions who... Won't be returning to the club this year. And we've had rumors that Scott McCluskey is not going to be joining the team this year as he has other responsibilities and and life events going on this season. And But in their stead, the wrestler is welcoming a whole crop, whole crop of young players to this club, including names like Brett Leggett, Kate Kusak, um, Brandon Muse, a number of players who have, Kale Perkins, who have played plenty of hockey here in Wainwright, but are joining the wrestlers for the first time, and Wyatt Watson, who has already been an electric member on the top line, top forward line for these wrestlers. Nice. A very talented hockey player is put on the orange jersey this year. Now Hamilton tries to pick up the puck behind the net, has to just chip it forward. Brad Bailey pinching in from the blue line to keep it in deep. He's got it in the corner, battling for it there. He swings it back towards Hamilton, but it's just out of his reach. And he loses an edge behind the net, and now the Elks have a chance to come the other way. Ori Wood got just a piece of that stretch pass, so there's no icing. And the Elks able to keep it in the zone. Lonsbury heavy on the forecheck. The wrestler is able to clear it out. Fourteen minutes left in the second period as the Elks have it in their own end. Trying to clear the zone and unable to do so as Cody Woodward knocks it down. Now Leggett 
Chips it back down to Woodward down low and a chance in front, but looked like Brandon Muse had his stick tied up in front of the net and he couldn't get a shot off. Now Connor James with a cross ice pass. He finds Leggett across the center ice and plays it to the far corner as Woodward's in on the forecheck. Lonsbury fans on the clearing attempts, but the Elks are able to get it back and now they come the other way with numbers. But a great job by Connor James to step into a passing lane. The wrestlers have a two-on-one the other way, and his shot goes off the shoulder of Fraser. And the Elks now able to come away with the puck right in front of us here in front of the penalty box. And now a chance as Stabler had come out of the box, and the puck had taken a weird bounce off a stanchion and came right to the middle of the ice. But Stabler didn't have the patience to wait for that puck, and he took a stride offside. So we get a whistle here. And it's going to be all the way back towards the Elk Point blue line comes the faceoff. Soretsky in for it now. And he wins it against Roy. Or, sorry, Gagne. And Soretsky chips it forward trying to find Hamilton, but just out of his reach. Surely... Able to pick off the pass there and play it in deep. Fraser leaves it there for his defenseman. Up to Stabler and now over to Gagne. Gagne sends it all the way across. And a hard shot by Dallas Bristow from just inside the blue line. He let go of an absolute rocket of a slap shot. Which beat Tommy Eisman high glove side. And that's going to make it a 5-2 hockey game as the Elks trying to claw their way back into this one. Now the wrestlers are going to march out their top line and try and put a stop to this surge from the Elks. Watson won the faceoff, but a little too firmly and ended up scooting right back on goal. So the wrestlers trying to regroup in their own end. Bailey sends it to Perkins. Perkins lumbers across the blue line and chips it in deep. He's hard on the forecheck and throws a good hit behind the net. Now Watson picks it up, dances around a pair of defenders, puts a wrist shot on goal. Good save made by Fraser. And Watson stays with it, picks up the loose puck. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the Elks able to steal that one away. It's Roy down the right side. He chips it in behind the net, chases it himself. Bailey plays it off the boards to Fister on the far side. And now Fletcher in the corner. He chips it up the boards. There's a bunch of Elks there. They flipped it way up in the air. Ends up coming down on Roy's stick. He tries a backhand here from behind the net. Sends it towards the blue paint, but ends up coming all the way to the other side of the ice. Loose puck just inside the blue line is picked up. By Cale Perkins, he crosses the blue line, fires a wrist shot right off the chin of Fraser. Drops straight down. He's not able to jump on the loose puck, though, and now <clears throat> a scramble for it there. Fister comes away with it, but he couldn't find a teammate in the slot, and the puck scoots out into the neutral zone. Now we got a whistle here. Looks like we're just going to give... Grady Fraser, a second to collect himself. Do up uh, maybe a strap that came loose on his goalie mask after he made the save with the, the chin of his mask. Looks like we're all ready and good to go. Russers win the draw, and it's Gauze in the center ice. He sends it to Clausen, who redirects that puck deep in behind the net with this skate, but the Elks able to come away with it. It's Stabler crossing the blue line, slams on the brakes and chips it in deep. Connor James is there to pick it up, chips it forward for Clausen. He's got it in the corner, but can't get it up the boards to Wetzel. And now James leaves it there for Goslin. Russell still can't escape their own zone. But James picks it up, and he's going to do it himself. He carries it right through the middle of the ice. Steps around one defender, second defender, and shoots through the third. 
But the save was made, and the rebound is deflected up into the netting and over the glass. So we'll get a face-off here. Brandon Mews in for the draw. He's got Leggett on his right-hand side waiting for it. But the Elks come away with the puck, and they clear the zone. Russell's with a chance now. Woodward hustles to pick up a loose puck just inside the blue line. And now Leggett trying to redirect one on net. But the Elks come away with it. They got a three on one. Bailey's hustling back to try and get in the play. But Josh Berg with an incredible defensive play as the only man back who breaks up that pass. Picks it up himself, sends a stretch pass to Kelvin Hamilton who dances around a defender. He's got Leggett in front. He carries it behind the net, tries to feed it to leg with a little wraparound pass, but they can't connect, and the Elks are able to clear the zone. Now Soretsky picks up a great pass from Shirley. He fires through the legs of the defender. Shirley picked up the rebound, but couldn't beat Fraser in the five hole, and the Elks pick up the loose puck, clear it all the way down the ice, and that'll be icing. 9.24 remaining in this second period, and the wrestlers have been held off the scoreboard in this second frame. It's 5-2 to two in favor of the home team. And we just recently got an update on Tyler Ray, who took a huge hit in the later stages of that opening period and took a long time to get off the ice. Looked quite woozy. He went back to the locker room and got checked out by the trainers who decided it was best to send him to local hospital to be checked out by a physician so he is at the hospital right now and if we get any other updates we'll be sure to let you know and we wish the best for him and hope he's doing okay we look to be a little bit out of it after that high hit that drew a five minute major penalty and the wrestler scored three times on that power play But of course, the health and safety of the long-standing wrestler, Tyler Ray, is more important than any power play goal, so we wish him the best. Watson wins the draw. Fletcher's there to pick it up and scoot behind his own net where he feeds Cale Perkins, and a nice pass up to Watson with speed. Right at the middle of the ice, and he tries to go low blocker side, but Fraser, right place, right time, makes a good save. And now Fister forces a turnover just inside the blue line, but can't hold on to it. The Elks come the other way. Now Fister with a chance right in front, and in tight, he tried to raise it up and over the shoulder of Fraser, but Grady able to make the save and hold on for another face off. Just over eight minutes to go in this middle frame. The wrestlers trying to start their fresh season on the right foot against this Elk Point Elks team, who's 0-1 to start the season as they lost their season opener at home last weekend to the Lashburn Flyers. Now Saratsky from along, or sorry, James from along the boards can't feed that pass in front. He gets it back on the other side now, but loses his handle on it momentarily, and it costs him possession in the zone, so he's got to back up, and the wrestlers have to try and set things up once again. Now cross-ice pass finds Gagne in stride. He comes in the left wing, flying across the blue line. Let's go of a shot, but it was blocked by Fletcher, and the wrestler was able to clear the zone. Oh, hard shot from inside the point. Goes well wide of the net. Another hard shot right on goal, but Eisenman makes the save. Takes the rebound away, and the wrestler is clear of the zone. Now Roy along the boards trying to slide it up to Wood, but the wrestlers get a hold of it. But that pass... Split the wrestlers forwards. Nobody could get a hold of it. And we get an icing call here as Bailey chases it down. 
And with 6.52 left in the second period, we'll get a face-off. Looks like it'll be to Fraser's right-hand side. Muse with a good face-off win, but wasn't able to get the shot off. He was looking to get a chance in the high slot. But the Elks ice the puck again, so the wrestlers will have another chance here in the offensive zone. Muse gets thrown out of the circle for going too early, so Woodward comes in and wins it. Goslin from the point now. His shot is directed wide by the blocker of Fraser. And now the puck gets chipped up into the netting. We'll get a face off outside the blue line. Wrestlers win the draw once again. Gosselin sends it into the far corner and chasing it down is Kelvin Hamilton. Great forecheck as he forces turnover and now Shirley from behind the net chops it into the corner. Suretsky gets hauled down there as he tried to chase it. The Elks not able to clear the zone. Shirley with it now in the corner. He'll shovel it forward to Hamilton. He gets upended right along the boards. The Elks still not able to clear it. Now they have a little time and space from the corner, and they're able to get it out into the neutral zone. The Elks come the other way, but Norman, with a good defensive play along the boards, puts a stop to that rush. And Watson, nifty little toe drag move to step around the four checker. He'll carry it himself across the blue line, bouncing puck, but he gets a hold of it, and his shot goes just wide. Mister is able to pick up that puck before it crosses the blue line, and he sends it in deep to keep a little bit of pressure on for the wrestlers. The Elks clear down the ice, but only to about the wrestler blue line where Connor James picks it up, sends it to Wyatt. He leaves it there for Kale Perkins, and now Wyatt with a chance in front with a loose puck off the rebound. He swings it around in front, but nobody there in the slot to pick it up, and the Elks clear the zone. Fletcher crosses the blue line, but just a little too quick as Watson was making his way to the bench and hadn't quite gotten back across the blue line. So an offside call on the wrestlers. Five minutes, 10 seconds to go in this second period. Now the Elks not able to clear the zone. Clausen puts a stop to that and plays it in deep for Woodward. Woodward with a pass in front and a great opportunity there for Muse, but he got stick checked right at the last second. Now the wrestlers have to regroup and try again. It's Fletcher with the puck at his own blue line. Now up to Clausen on the right wing. He's not able to receive that pass cleanly and the Elks able to chip it into neutral ice. Connor James there to pick it up. Nice little sauce pass over to Muse, but it ends up in his skates. Clausen's there to pick it up and chip it into the corner. And the wrestlers will go for a line change. Now the other way, it's Wood. With a fake shot, gets it to Gagne. Gagne's not able to get a good look at the net, so he'll just play it in behind the net. Long shot from the point, goes wide, and now the Elks work it in deep. They try to find Gagne out in front, can't connect in the pass, and the wrestlers have a chance to come the other way. It's Shirley down the left wing. He's got Soretsky on the right side. He steps in, fires himself, but misses the net. And the puck caroms off the boards all the way out into the neutral zone. Soretsky picks up a loose puck there, though, as Gagne couldn't hold on to it. But he passes it right back to Gagne, and now the Elks the other way. It's Wood with a hard shot. But can't get through a couple sets of rustlers' legs there. And Hamilton now crosses the blue line. Leaves it there for Goslin. His long shot was steered away with a blocker. 
Bailey from the blue line sends it in deep, finding Soretsky in the corner. Soretsky spins around, looking for a centering pass out in front, but couldn't find a lane, and now he's pinned against the boards. Just to the left of the Elk Point goal, he comes away with it cleanly himself, and he gets pinned once again. Now Shirley's going to come in to help. He'll swing it around the boards the other way, and Hamilton's there to pick it up. He sends a shot on goal and a tip from Soretsky, who had gotten back to his feet just in time, but he ends up deflecting it up and over the net and into the netting. So we get a face-off here outside the blue line. Two fifty-six remaining in this second period as the wrestlers hold on to this 5-2 lead after scoring five goals in the opening period. Goslin's cross-ice pass got picked off. The Elks have a chance to clear the zone. Goslin with another chance, but that pass got knocked down out of midair as well. And now the Elks carried into the offensive zone. They work it deep into the corner. Goslin's there to apply a little physical pressure. Rustlers still able to clear the zone now. And Fister picks it up. He's on the left wing. He's mono a mono with the defenseman. He comes in and drops it there for Wyatt, who was trailing the play, but he couldn't get much on that one timer. And the wrestlers work it in deep. It's Cale Perkins in there trying to get in front of that clearing attempt, but the Elks able to relieve the pressure. But only for a moment. Perkins now picks it up and soft little pass up to Wyatt. His shot goes off a of skate and doesn't make it to the net. Now the Elks the other way, right through the middle of the ice as they cross the blue line. Not much of an opportunity there as they fan on the shot. The wrestlers able to just get it into Elks territory and go for a line change. They got some fresh legs out there now, but now the Elks with speed come the other way down the left wing. That shot goes wide to the net, rings around the boards, and Lonsberry gets there in time to keep it in the zone. As Stabler chases it down in the near corner for the Elks. His centering pass looking for Gagne doesn't connect. But now Gagne stops the wrestler's clearing attempt. But only the first time they get it again and put it out towards center ice. The Elks now from in front of the penalty boxes. Tries a shot from 100 feet away. And it gets knocked down before it reached the net. And now a shot goes wide of the goal and bounces off the glass and into the neutral zone as we hit the final minute of the second period. Connor James from the near corner in his own end. Cycles it down low trying to find anybody. And Muse eventually does get there and chips it back to James who just bangs it off the glass and out towards center ice. Now the Elks maybe with a chance here as Wood picks it up but he goes offside as... Looked like it was uh, Kenner that went offside as Ori would pick up the puck just inside the blue line. So that's going to be offside. And with 37 and a half seconds to go in this middle period, we'll get a face off here right next to the Wainwright Rustlers logo. Rustlers with a chance now. It's Berg carrying it across the line. His heavy shot is just over the net. Shirley's there to pick up the loose puck. He gets it back again now after playing it in deep. And good opportunity, but Frazier with another good save. Down to 21.8 seconds to go. And the Elks win the draw, but they're not able to clear the zone. And Soretsky down low with a centering pass. A chance right in front. Couple whacks at it there as Hamilton and Shirley were both there, but they couldn't put one home. And as the time ticks down, we got a bouncing puck that ends up right on the Elk Point net. Fraser is able to snag that one and hold on as we got five seconds flat remaining in this second period. Rustlers maybe with the last second opportunity here. Soretsky directing his captain where to be for the faceoff win. We'll see if Goslin can get a shot off in the dying seconds of this period. But the Elks are going to win that draw, and that's going to do it as the buzzer goes. And that's the end of the second period. The Elks pick up a pair of goals here in the middle frame and draw back to within three. It's a 5-2 hockey game here in the Wainwright Wrestlers season opener. 
We're going to take a break here for the second intermission. We'll be back with you in about 20 minutes for the start of the third period. Don't go far.
Welcome back, wrestlers fans. We're getting ready for the start of the third period. Wainwright holding on to a 5-2 lead after 40 minutes of play. They scored five in the first, gave up two in the second. That's still a strong three-goal lead. They say it's the most dangerous lead in hockey, but the wrestlers are going to try and dispel that here with a strong third period. The Elks slowly making their way back to the bench. The wrestlers on the ice, ready and waiting to go. In other action around the Sask Alpha Senior Hockey League tonight, the Kit Scotty Monarchs are playing in Vermilion. Vermilion rejoining the Sask Alpha this year. And if we can find a score update there, we'll let you know later on. But for now, we're in action here in the third period as the wrestlers have control of the puck here to start things. Watson tried a nice little nutmeg through the legs on Lonsbury, but not able to hold on to the puck that was scooting a little too quick on this fresh ice. Now battle in the corner. Perkins kicks it up to the point to Berg. His long, high shot sails over the net. Bounces off the glass and out into the neutral zone. The wrestlers pick it up there and dump it in deep. Quick line change here for the forwards. The Elks not able to clear the zone. Hamilton picks it up. He's got Fister. Fister looking across the other way, and he scores! Derek Fister with his second of the night as he puts a sharp angle shot on goal. It looked like it went off Fraser's arm and deflected into his own net making it 6-2, to two, and that three-goal lead disappears. The wrestlers now ahead by four, less than a minute into the third period. Now the Elks win the ensuing draw, and Wood puts a long shot from the neutral zone wide of the net. Hamilton chases down a pass in the neutral zone. Cuts to the middle of the ice, tries to feed Shirley, but it was a little far, a little too far out of his reach. And now the Elks come the other way. Wood once again from the neutral zone fires a shot on net. And Eisman holds on to that one for a faceoff. Now the Elks win the draw. Stabler tries to get it back to the point. It does make its way back there. And that shot from the point was directed by redirected by Wood, but up and over the net. The Elks able to maintain the zone, and it's Stabler from behind the net with a centering pass, but ends up on the stick of Brent Soretsky, who quickly works it up ice. Shirley gets a hold of it in the neutral zone and chips it into the far corner, and then he shovels it forward, just trying to keep the puck deep. Now, right from the slot, Hamilton with a backhand pass to Soretsky, and Brant Soretsky gets his first of the season, making it 7-2 for the home club as wrestlers come out of the gates firing here in the third period, scoring twice in the first minute and 48 seconds. Now the wrestlers work from their own end. It's Bailey playing it off the boards to Leggett. He cycles it back to Bailey. He crosses the red line and dumps it into the near corner. The Elks look to exit the zone now, and they play it off the boards to the neutral zone where Bailey tries to pick it up, but he gets stripped by Gagne. And now bouncing puck, and Gagne took a whack at it. And a great scoring chance there, but the shot just goes wide. Wrestlers get possession, but Berg isn't able to clear the zone. Lonsbury picks it up, looking for a redirect. And he got one in front, but it was redirected wide of the net. Now they'll have another chance as Gagne picks up a loose puck. His centering pass is picked off by Cody Woodward. And now Woodward carries it across center ice, feeds it over to Clausen. Clausen trying to find Leggett, but the pass is in his skates. And it goes down into the corner. 
Wood with a hard pass up ice, and the Elks with a chance down in front, and that backhander goes up over the net, and the wrestlers are going to take a penalty here. It's going to be two minutes for slashing, and it's going to be Nick Norman, the defenseman, heading to the box, and the Elks will get their first power play opportunity in quite some time. They haven't had the man advantage since early in the first period. Now the wrestlers win the draw and swing it around the boards and it just sneaks across the blue line and out of harm's way. Now Fletcher picks off a pass and gains the zone, fires a shot that's steered up over the net by the blocker of Fraser. Fister is able to clear it all the way down the ice with a big flip of the puck. Now the Elks try to exit the zone. They do, carrying it across center ice, across the blue line, and now try to set something up, but plenty of pressure from the wrestlers. Penalty kill there. The Elks are able to get it down low, and a centering pass is deflected by Goslin. Avoiding any scoring chance there for the visiting club as now they work it in deep once again. Eisman's going to come out of his crease, ring it around the boards to Hamilton, who... Chips it off the boards to Berg, who is able to get enough on it to clear it all the way down the ice. And the wrestlers will go for a full-service change on the penalty kill. Aside from the four-checker, Brant Soretsky, who's got plenty of speed, trying to pick the pocket of the puck carrier. But Gagne gets a hold of it, carries across the blue line. The Elks able to stay on side. Now from the near side, they put a hard shot low into the glove side of Eisman, and he holds on to that one. We'll get another face-off here as there's 36 seconds remaining in the Norman penalty. The Elks now with possession, trying to set up a power play here with that pass to the point, well out of the reach of any blue liner. Lonsbury picks it up, carries it in himself, steps around Connor James, fires a pass to the left side, and that shot was deflected by Fletcher out of harm's way. But a good chance there by the Elks as they were threatening on the power play, which has just six seconds remaining. Now Lonsbury from the point. Feeds it down to Stabler. Stabler's shot misses the net, but stays in the zone. Norman comes out of the box and quickly applies pressure just inside the blue line. The wrestler is cleared all the way down the ice, but that's going to be an icing call. I know we got the 50-50 draw. Maybe I win something here on the season opener. And I did not win anything on the 50-50. The trend continues. But maybe this year will be my year that I finally get one. A mess of bodies in front of the wrestler's goal, but they're able to keep the puck out of the net and even clear the zone, forcing the Elks to regroup. The Elks trailing by five goals now with 14 and a half minutes to go in the third period. And now Connor James carries it himself. Wrestlers have numbers if they hustle. He feeds it over to Shirley, but it was in his skates. He's not able to hold on to that one. And now the Elks come the other way. That drop pass just out of the reach of Roy. He tries to feed a pass into the slot. But Goslin with a good defensive play broke up that rush. Berg picks up the puck just inside his own blue line. Feeds it to Goslin, who's looking up ice. Tries to stretch it to Mike Shirley. Can't get the pass through, but he does get the puck back. Carries it across the blue line himself. Now the Elks having trouble exiting their own zone. They send a stretch pass that's caught out of midair by Soretsky. 
Skates it in, fires a shot, but a good blocker save made. Now in the corner, Soretsky and two Elks players. And Soretsky got a little help from Fister, but he got his pocket picked, and now Gagne comes the other way with it quickly. A low shot, but a good pad save made there by Eisman as he shut the five hole quickly. Now the wrestlers with a chance. It's Watson who turns it up ice. He would have had help, but Connor James got tripped up at his own blue line. No penalty call on that. Maybe there was a penalty call on that, unless this is a separate incident. We're going to get a trip here. It's going to be Wozniak heading to the box. Two minutes for tripping, and the wrestlers once again go to the power play. They've had all kinds of success with the man advantage tonight. Now the wrestlers with the puck to start the power play. It's James at the point. He steps in low, feeds it to Watson at the top of the faceoff circle. But his shot was blocked. He picks it back up. Tries to send it all the way back across to James, but that pass got deflected. And now Roy picks it up, but he puts himself offside as he can't handle the bouncing puck. And we'll get a faceoff right in front of the wrestler's bench. Russellers win the draw, and it's Connor James with it once again. Right through center ice, he feeds it to Watson, and they slow things down as they cross the blue line, trying to set up the power play. The Elks able to get a hold of it, clear the zone where Fletcher picks it up. His cross-ice pass ends up finding Fister on the far side. Slides it down to Watson. Watson steps in front in a nice little move. Trying to go through the legs, but not able to get the puck high enough to get over the pads of Fraser. Now Eisman leaves it there for Josh Berg. Hamilton picks it up right in the face of the pressure from Wood. But he uses his speed to break it to the outside. Slams on the brakes right in front of the Zamboni door. He finds Goslin on the far point, or on the near point, I should say. Now Soretsky in the corner tries to feed it in front of Shirley. But he got his stick tied up and the puck bounces its way up to the point. Chance now in front for Hamilton, but he put that one over the net. 25 seconds remaining in the power play for Wainwright. It's Shirley with a sharp angle shot. But a good save made by there, made there by Fraser as he hugs the post. Goslin sends a hard pass right into the slot. But Hamilton not able to spin around fast enough to get a shot off. And now Soretsky's got it pinned against the wall. Hamilton comes in to help out. And now goes up to Goslin at the point, And his shot knocked down right in front of the net. There's a loose puck right above the crease. Fraser wasn't able to get a hold of it for the first few seconds there. So the wrestlers were attacking the loose puck. And the Elks defenseman clearly not happy with that. We got some rough stuff right in behind the net. Goslin getting rough and tumble in there, and now he's throwing some shots as Kenner was. I'll give that to the boss, man. Kenner was giving Goslin the business there. And Goslin eventually was a little sick of it and gave it right back to him. We'll see what comes out of this penalty wise. Goslin's going to head to the box for sure. Looks like Kenner's going to head to the box as well. We'll see if anybody gets a man advantage out of this situation. We're going to have offsetting minors here. It stays five on five hockey as we got 10.51 remaining in this third and presumably final period. And 
Now the referee slows things down as they're going to be sending a member of the Elks coaching staff to the room as they, the officials have ejected a member of the coaching staff. And now Gagne, the Elks assistant captain, having a word with the official Sheldon Johnson. Just to sort things out and clear the air, and now away we go. Connor James looks for the centering pass, but nothing was there, and now the Elks come the other way. They're outnumbered, though. They try a shot from the blue line, but that one was knocked down easily and doesn't make its way to the goal. Now Leggett with a good stick lift to get the puck back, and Connor James picks it up, carries it across the blue line. He fires a shot that goes off the chin. Of Fraser's mask once again. That's the second time tonight he's taken one up high like that off off his goalie mask. Now James with a centering pass through the crease, but Leggett couldn't find it in his skates. The Elks able to get a hold of it, and Gagne clears the zone, but not deep enough. To be too effective as the wrestlers quickly turn it up the other way. Fister comes in, fires one, looking for the hat trick. But that shot was blocked before it could make it to the net. Now a chance down low. Fister with a chance with a loose puck. He tries to bat that one out of the air. And now out in front, Trevor Clausen buries one to extend this lead. It's 8-2. to two. And Trevor Clausen joins a long list of Wainwright wrestlers to start their season with a goal in the first game on home ice. Now the wrestlers with another chance. That puck gets swatted away by an Elks defenseman. They clear the puck down the ice. And Lonsbury picks it up there in the neutral zone. He fends off the forecheck, but his pass is knocked down. And now Wood tries to move it up ice, but Berg puts a stop to that and gives the wrestlers a chance to come the other way, but that stretch pass ends up right on net, and Fraser holds on for another faceoff. Just under nine minutes to go in this game. Wainwright with a stranglehold on this one with an 8-2 lead. Hamilton from the slot, his backhander ends up in the chest of Fraser. As the wrestlers have just peppered the Elk Point goaltender with shots tonight. It's 46 to 21 in favor of the wrestlers on the shot counter. And they win the draw here. Fletcher from the point. His shot was knocked down right before it could reach the goaltender. Wrestlers win the draw once again. Hamilton from behind the net. Works it into the corner. Cycles it to Soretsky. Tries to feed Shirley in front. That pass got slashed away. The wrestlers regroup at center ice. Fletcher tried to dump it into the near corner. and Ends up in the netting. And we'll get a face off here all the way down. Just outside the wrestlers blue line. Wainwright with another face-off win. Connor James with it now as he sends it to his D partner, Fletcher. And now a nice little touch pass. Almost found Watson, but it was about a half stride out of his reach. So now the Elks 
try to send it up ice, but that pass was behind Roy. The wrestlers come the other way. Kale Perkins with a long wrist shot was knocked down by Fraser, and the Elks flip it right to center ice, but James is there to knock it down. Now Fister intercepts a pass in his own end. Takes his time working through the neutral zone. Nice little move to chip it forward and work around the defender. And now Muse with it in the corner. Tries to leave it there for Fister, but it finds its way to Gosselin instead. And now a centering pass from Wyatt to Muse doesn't connect, but Fister had a chance there to get his third of the night, but another good save made by Grady Fraser. The wrestler's season, their schedule this year is an interesting one. Very home game heavy in the first half of the season. Leaving them with a long stretch of road games after the holidays. Wainwright will have... As Frazier makes a good glove save and holds on for a faceoff once again. The Rustlers will have eight of their first 11 games of the season on home ice. From Saturday, Gen December 16th until the end of the season on Saturday, January 27th, the Rustlers will have just one home game as they play almost the entire second half of the season on the road. But assuming that this one is in the books with a six-goal lead, six and a half minutes to go, the wrestlers will look to pick up their second win of the season when they host the Hillmond Hitmen on Saturday, next Saturday, November 4th at 8 p.m. as always here at Vision Credit Union Arena. It'll be student night next Saturday. So all you students watching in town and the surrounding area, come on down. You get in for free. Watch some great hockey. These wrestlers, they really look like they're going to be a team to contend with in the Saskatchewan Senior Hockey League this season. Lots of offensive firepower, lots of grit, lots of speed, and two very strong, <coughs> excuse me, two very strong goaltenders. This is definitely going to be one of the stronger teams in the league this season, and they're going to look to continue their hot start to this 2023-24 season. Next Saturday at 8 p.m., the Hillmond Hitmen in town. Boston wins the draw here in his own end. Fletcher chips it forward. Try and bounce off the body check, but not able to clear the zone. And James is going to take a penalty here. It's going to be a cross check as he gave a good shot to Ori Wood in front of the wrestler's net. And he'll make his way to the box. Serving two for a cross check. And the wrestler is back on the penalty kill. The Elks win the draw and just work it in low as there's plenty of pressure towards the blue line from Kelvin Hamilton and Brent Soretsky. The wrestlers are able to force a turnover and send the puck all the way down in behind the Elks net. Now Gagne down the right wing carries it across the blue line and just slides the puck forward but isn't able to connect with any teammates there and the wrestlers... Chip the puck out of the zone. The Elks having trouble getting past center ice as the wrestlers just applying consistent pressure on the forecheck. Now Roy through the center of the ice.
drops it there for Gagne. Gagne looking across the ice. Couldn't find anybody in the far corner. Berg's there to pick it up and tried to clear the zone, but the puck took a weird bounce off a of stanchion. The wrestlers on their second chance, they able to chip it in deep, go for a line change. Now Wood comes in and fires, but his shot missed the net. Lonsbury not able to keep that bouncing puck inside the blue line. Now Wood all alone with four wrestlers defenders in the zone. He's able to find Stabler and feeds it to him, but he gets tied up. He's eventually able to work to the point. Now Lonsbury up there fires a shot, but a good block by Spencer Goslin getting right in the shooting lane. Connor James is standing and ready to come back on the ice as time ticks down on his cross-checking penalty. And we're now back to full-strength five-on-five hockey as Ori Wood fires a shot that missed the net. Rebound ended up on a wrestler's stick and they cleared down the ice, but that's going to be icing. With three minutes, 18 seconds left in this game. As the wrestlers are going to start this season 1-0, just as they did last year against this same team. The Elks poised to fall to 0-2 after losing to Lashburn last weekend. Now Connor James down the left wing. Sends a rocket of a wrist shot wide of the goal. It rings around the boards. And as Wozniak tried to chip it off the boards, ended up in the Elks bench. So now we're going to get a faceoff down in Elk Point territory. And it's just a tick under three minutes to go in this one. The Elks pick it up along the boards, send a cross-ice pass. But Kenner couldn't get enough on that to chip it into the wrestler's zone. We're going to get another icing call against Wainwright. Trevor Clausen, Ori Wood in for the faceoff, and Wood wins it this time. The Elks with a long shot from the point. Easy save made by Eisman. The second one, not so easy, but he kicks his pad out and controls the rebound, scoops that up off the ice, and we get another faceoff in the same spot. Once again, the Elks win the faceoff in similar scenario. Long shot from the point is scooped up by Eisman. Eisman rocking a brand new set of goaltender gear this year from True. New pads, trapper, blocker, stick, and boy, it is looking fresh. Best looking goaltender in the league right now with those new pads. Nice cream color with orange and black trim. Very much classic wrestler's colors. As he not only looks the part, but plays the part of a great goaltender here tonight, stopping 22 of 24 shots. Now with two minutes, two seconds left in the third period, we get some words exchanged by from Brandon Muse and... A couple of Elks players noticed a little bit of chippiness in front of the benches as well as there is some personnel changes going on in between whistles. But late in a game like this, in a blowout game, you don't expect much, much more to come of something like that. Tough night for the Elks coming in here is... They were already outnumbered by a full wrestler's bench. They're now 
with less than two minutes to go in the game, down to just seven players on the bench, five on the ice. As they had a couple misconducts. Even had a member of the coaching staff sent to the showers early and a little bit of undisciplined actions from this visiting team tonight really put them in a hole, especially after a seven-minute power play resulted in three wrestlers' goals. And that was the turning point of this game. Speaking of that power play opportunity, it was Tyler Ray, if you remember, who took that high hit that drew the five-minute major for head contact. He was taken to the hospital uh, right around the second intermission mark. And he's being checked out. He's going for some tests right now. And uh, we wish him nothing but the best. And hope he can get back to normal life soon, even if it does take him a while to get back on the ice. He's a family man and a firefighter, and we need him healthy and so he can take care of his family and then those who need him the most. So we wish him nothing but the best and hope to see him soon. And we're now down to 52 seconds left in this game. Rustlers win the draw and Gosselin will just chip it up the boards. Hamilton's there to receive it. And he'll put it against the boards. They're content just to kill as much time off this game as possible as we wind down to the final seconds. Good save made there by Iveson, his 24th of the night. As the wrestlers cleared all the way down the ice and ends up right on goal, so no icing. The Elks just looking for maybe a feel-good play here, but not going to get much out of it as Hamilton gets a stick in the passing lane, and that puck ends up all the way down the ice, and that's going to do it for this one. As the buzzer goes, and the Wainwright Rustlers start the season 1-0 with a big 8-2 victory over the Elk Point Elks. Plenty of offensive production all the way through the lineup tonight. Derek Fister with a pair of goals and six other goal scorers contributing to this blowout victory. Tommy Eisenman stopping 25 of 27 shots for his first victory of the season. And the wrestlers start off on the right foot going 1-0, starting off great on home ice. And that's going to do it for the season opener. We'll be back with you next Saturday at 8 p.m. as the Hillmont Hitmen come to town. If you're in town and make and can make it, come on down and add to the great atmosphere down here during wrestlers' games. Grab yourself a drink, grab some 50-50 tickets, and enjoy the game live and in person. But if you can't make it, we'd love to have you join us here on the YouTube stream. We will be live in time for warm-ups around 7.30, and we'll be bringing you the live action when the puck drops just after 8 p.m. But until then, stay safe, enjoy your Halloween. Stay warm out there, and we'll see you next Saturday night. Thanks for joining us.